You're listening to Centered and Sent, a podcast of Impact Church, encouraging disciples of Jesus to center their lives on the gospel and to be sent with the kingdom purpose. So, so let me summarize this. So what you're telling us is that when you share the gospel with somebody, it's already, they've already seen you follow Jesus. So that's the first one. And then as you disciple somebody or train them up in, uh, in their faith, it happens before they even give their lives to Jesus. The, so the, the moment you meet somebody, it's, you're already thinking discipleship yep. in that. All right, and then just summarize one more. Multiplication is just evangelism and discipleship. That's it. Love it. Good job, okay. Jordan. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so, so, anything else you'd like to add? I can't really add too much more. I mean, these guys do an excellent job. At, you know, it just goes to show, well, first off, that's why I'm thankful that you guys are here in this type of culture because it just goes to show how important the vision right. of church ministry is you know it's it real this is not something where it's like hey you finish off seminary you finish off this you grow up in the church for a little while no this has to be the culture from the get-go and uh, the fact that you guys are in this type of culture already that's so cool yes. and i uh, just continue on with that because it's just who you are it's not a switch it's not like evangelism mode multiplication mode <laughs> turn on right now no it's not right <laughs> it is who you are yeah. as you are a follower of christ and it just becomes so natural and a joyful thing to do as you see the fruit of your labor. That's right. Mm. So you walk with people in life mm. and you share the hope of Christ. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. I think, I think I've heard that. Love it. Um, so I, I want to know what does that process then look like for you personally? Like, uh, give us a personal example of how you've seen that play out. Yeah, I'll start with that. For me, just uh, in short, it's, you know, I'm thankful to the Lord that I have just a very relational style of ministry and philosophy, uh, which is very uh, ironic because growing up, and I still am somewhat, I'm a very introverted guy. I really am. You don't even like people. I do not like people. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, youth ministry was just a whole charade the entire time. You know? I yell at them, they keep on coming back. I yell at them more and they keep on coming back. But no, truly, it really is the spirit of the Lord that causes love for your fellow man and your person. And so for me, I just love living life with people. Uh, you know, just even if it's just like, hey, I'm going to go grocery shopping. You want to come with me? No. Well, too bad. You, you're coming with me because I need help, right? And, and, and they, they come, right? <laughs> what else are they going to do? They have nothing else to do. Don't, it's like, don't lie to me. You got nothing right now. But <laughs> the cool thing is through that, through that is, you know, as you are being, you know, personally, as you're being sensitive and aware to what the Spirit is speaking to you and revealing to you, he gives so many examples of ministry opportunities, whether it's just like a person on the street that you could be talking to and praying over. Uh, it's just like there's an opportunity to serve or just an idea that comes to mind as you're having a conversation with one another. It's like how great that is that you have somebody already with you and you can just share and just talk about that. And your natural excitement, you know, your genuine excitement for that, you're like, man, this is so cool. Jesus is literally working right here. Did you remember, even today, as I was sharing at the table, uh, um, what, were we, what were we doing today? We were giving authentic examples of faithfulness, mm-hmm. right? To challenge people, let the Spirit challenge people uh, to think about spiritual matters, about Jesus, about the church, and so forth, right? And so the fact that we got to do that together today, I mean, it's like that should be your inner joyful desire every moment of your life. Why? What's the end result? What's the goal of what we're doing? What's our reward? It is the glory of Christ. It is for people to draw closer to Jesus, right? To be saved under him and uh, to celebrate and worship that together. Hmm. So good. I'll I'll tell you, uh, for me, just a recent example, because I was just talking to my wife about this uh, before we came over tonight, but um, so we have this girl, this lady uh, in our church, and uh, she actually, like when I was a youth pastor at an an established church, uh, she would come and I was preaching, I was a youth pastor, but I was 
preaching on Sundays. And so she would come and like hear me uh, preach and I didn't know. And then, um, and then when we started a church, one day she just showed up. She's like, hey, you know me? I'm like, no, I've never seen you. She's like, yeah, I've been listening to you preach. I'm like, this is like before live stream, you know? So I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So like she started coming. Well, then she gave her life to Jesus. And we ended up, she ended up being one of the first people that we baptized at Impact uh, Chantilly. And then like one day her life fell apart. She got, she had really bad mental health issues and she got hospitalized for them. And we just lost touch with her. Like probably for about three or four years. Like just didn't know really where she was, what she was doing. She wasn't on social media or anything. Well then like all of a sudden, I don't know how she heard this or what happened, but she moved to Fredericksburg over that time. And when we moved to plant a church, I've not seen this woman in like three or four or five years. I have forgotten she existed, okay? <laughs> like and until Facebook brings back the memory of like the baptisms. And I'm like, man, I, I had no idea. Well then all of a sudden I get this, Facebook message from someone I wasn't friends with and it's like pastor Brandon. It's me I, I can't believe you're in Fredericksburg. I'm in Fredericksburg and I'm coming to your church this I'm like, I'm like I tell my wife. I'm like Ellen. She's back. She's coming back she's alive. Yeah, she's alive, you know, and she's like, oh my god. So anyway, so we like uh, So and sure enough she comes and starts coming to our community group. Well, here's the deal like when you don't know Jesus Do you know the only people those people hang out with? other people who don't know Jesus. So when you come to Christ, like the people that you're going to go reach are people who also don't know Jesus. We end up in this church bubble where all we know are church people. So when someone tells you to go reach the lost, it is weird because you don't, you don't naturally authentically know anyone that like you have a relationship with who's lost. And like, that, but, but my friend, our friend, this lady, like she, that's all she knew. Like, and I'm talking people from like the mental hospital, like people from prisons, people like, because she viewed it like her job from us discipling her to help all of these people. Mm -hmm. And so at church this past Sunday, I wasn't there. Ellen texts me and she says, hey, our friend, uh, she just brought like half a dozen homeless people to church. <laughs> and I'm like, I go, yeah, that's awesome. And I'm so glad I'm not there this Sunday. That's so good. <laughs> And, uh, but what's really neat is now, like my wife's update, she's like, she's like, baby, you need to pray because they're all coming to our house for community group this week. And like, I'm just going to preach the gospel to them. I'm just going to teach them the gospel and like give them a chance to get saved. You need to pray for our living room. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So that's, so that's an example of like natural event. Like you've got to find people who don't know Jesus and then lean into their community because yeah. that, you know, that's all they know too, are people who don't know Jesus. Um, so I am, I lean more towards Terry's side of the equation than Brandon, uh, cause I'm an extreme introvert pretty well too. That's why I married an extreme extrovert. So she can do the work for me, right? That's, that's what we do. So that's your marital advice for the evening. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so she does, she's good at, uh, we, we, we have a joke. She's good at meeting the people, but I'm good at keeping the people. Uh, because since she's the social butterfly, she'll just flit and flirt, and I'm the one that's like, hi, <laughs> let me connect with you. Um, and anyway, well, this isn't about me. So um, <laughs> when it comes to what discipleship looks like, I have a really hard time with, with cold knocking, um, with knocking on someone's door. Can I share with you the story of Jesus Christ? Um, I have a really hard time, uh, even in the first couple of conversations, going in a spiritual direction. Not because I don't want to, but because I'm awkward. Um, and Brandon has always said, don't be awkward. Um, that's, that is his pastoral advice for me. The only thing I Don't be awkward. <laughs> and so just, like, just, just don't, don't be awkward. Uh -huh. uh, and so I'm like, all right, so this is going to take a minute. Um, but uh, one of the things that I do get to do is I work at a community college. Um, and so I'm around academics all day long. Um, <laughs> air quotes were there for a reason. Um, but um, I've had some really great opportunities to talk to people who are, who are really smart, um, but have zero um, understanding of the gospel. Um, and be able to talk with them on, a, on, a, on an academic intellectual level, but then help them see that what you're doing um, or, or what we're talking about is, is deeper than this. 
Um, so for example, we went on a, we had a, a statewide conference. And so we were able to sit down um, with, it was me and my wife, um, it was the vice president, it was a dean, and it was two faculty members. So we're not talking like, you know, the average Joe people, we're talking like the normal, uh, like the, the higher ups of our uh, community college. Now we're sitting down at dinner on a rooftop restaurant um, in Roanoke, Virginia, um, and having this conversation, um, and they take it spiritual places. They, they are the ones who did it. And so I just, I mean, we just felt the spirit of the Lord saying, all right, like, here's your moment. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Great. Um, fantastic. Thanks, Jesus. Um, but come to find out, uh, we were sitting down with a, a, a woman who's been a lesbian for 30 years, um, a man who grew up in a Catholic church, but who uh, rejected that um, and uh, converted to Judaism with his husband. And then a woman who um, lives in, uh, she's divorced and believes in Jesus, but is not attending church because she doesn't know what that looks like for her now. And then another woman who um, has, whose husband was in ministry and has been faithfully going to church her whole life. And so now we're having this conversation about what it means to love God. And, and how, what does that mean for you as an individual? And um, this, the, the woman who was a lesbian just said, I just can't deal with people who tell me that God doesn't love me because I choose to love somebody different. And I looked at her and I said, I can't tell you that either. <laughs> um, but what I can tell you is that uh, God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. And um, we're going to let him work the rest of this out. Uh, but you have to settle with you what that means. Um, and if you want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. But you have to figure that out as far as what Jesus is asking you to do and what it means for you to love him. The rest of this, we'll work it out. Because you being a lesbian ha is one of the, the lowest things that we need to talk about. Uh, there's a whole lot more before we get there. Um, and I, I even took the initiative and just apologized. I said, I'm sorry that maybe other Christians have made you feel that you didn't have a seat at the table. Um, but I guarantee you that you do. Um, you just have to take it. Now, I have no idea what happens from that moment. She and I have had a few other conversations since then, but they've been work-related. Um, we haven't been at a, a rooftop restaurant where she's two glasses of wine in again. Um, <laughs> but but um, for me, the idea of, of discipleship looks like being present in the moment and taking advantage of it when it happens and not forcing it. Because for me, that's the hard part, is forcing the conversation when it wasn't going there. That's good. Thank you all so much. Um, moving on to church multiplication, and when I when I say church multiplication, I mean that the the not splitting because we don't want to say easy. That word. Yeah, it's a bad word. Oh, We're gonna censor that later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the S word. <laughs> so because you didn't split, you multiplied, and so let's talk about that for a second. Uh, specifically, um, what is what is the hardest thing? about church multiplication and then let's just go with what's also been the most joyful thing that has happened because of church multiplication i oh well, i'll start these guys are gonna have a totally different perspective than me because i came in and started the churches and then kind of started it and then uh handed it off and they so they We'll have a different experience because we're experiencing it in different ways. But what I hope you see from this panel is that you can be involved in multiplying disciples groups and churches no matter what your role is. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a lead guy. You don't have to be like you could just be a faithful follower of Jesus that comes and is a part. And uh, so for me, the hardest part, um, Jordan, was uh, leaving the people. Um, you know, I, I read your question and I went outside for a second because it um you know like i understand paul like in acts 20 when he's uh hanging out with the church at ephesus and he's like talking to those elders and he's like it was with many tears that uh we prayed together and we you know because these are the guys that paul led to jesus so when like when i was being sent out of the church that i started to go start another church even though it was only 30 miles away 40 miles away like it, it was leaving people that I've stood in the baptistry with. You know, it's leaving people that I've literally baptized, that they associate me with their spiritual walk. 
You know, it, it's leaving people who I've sat in their living rooms in their darkest moments. Um, it's leaving leaders who were without a doubt my best friends. Now they still are, like praise God we have technology and we don't live that far away from each other. But like, but knowing that it's gonna change, like I'm not going to see them every day of my life. Um, that was by far the hardest part. So don't, don't get a sexy view of multiplication. It is costly. Mm. Um, it, it costs and being a, so I'm the opposite of these guys. I am highly extroverted. I am super duper. Now they're relational too, but I'm like, I, everything rises and falls on relationships. And, uh, and so, so without a doubt, Jordan, that was the hardest part for me, uh, was even though I'm not saying goodbye forever and it seems like such a small move, things were going to be different. Like I, I was entrusting these people that I've tried my best to faithfully, not perfectly shepherd. And now I'm giving them to a new shepherd. Now a shepherd that I trust with my life, like a shepherd that has shepherded me as well. So like, and that's what I did those last couple of months as I submitted to Terry's shepherding. Like even though we were transitioning the church and there was this weird who's in charge kind of thing, we never talked about that. Like we knew, like he respected me and said, you're gonna, you're our pastor until you're not. And I respected him and said, but I need you to pastor me through this difficult transition for me and my family. And he did. And so that was the hardest part. Um, the most joyful part is, um, seeing life change because I'm now sitting in Fredericksburg with people whose lives have changed in the eight months that we've been a church whose lives would not have been changed mm -hmm. had we not counted the cost and gone, yep. including his, including like his whole family and so many other families I can tell you the story of. And that like every day that I feel like, man, I miss them so much. Um, I look around at what's happening and I go, but it's, it's worth it. And if I need to keep doing this time after time again for more and more lives to be changed, like, I guess I just will because it's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, well, my answer, very similar to Brandon uh, in the sense of the, that, that cost aspect of it. Um, for me, I thank the Lord that he really helped me through this process because, again, it was a process of where um, not only are you taking upon this position to potentially lead, right? So that's something that I had never done before. So that was new. Uh, it was during COVID. Uh, Brandon, to this day, I, I'll forgive him eventually, but uh, he, uh, he transitioned out when we were still looking for a church building. <laughs> Hey, I think I signed a lease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, so, but by God's grace and provision, he, he gave us a building through that process as well. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it was, uh, I mean, it was definitely a lot of changes at once. Oh, wow. And, um, but uh, again, the Lord was faithful through all those things. Mm -hmm. The painful aspect, uh, specifically, um, I would say from the church sender's point of view, this was something that I learned and experienced for the first time was in the multiplication process, uh, you have to trust in the Lord in this, you are sending your best workers, mm -hmm. right? Because why? The mission is that important. Mm -hmm. You want to offer your best for the sake of the gospel. So what does that mean practically? You're saying goodbye to your best workers. That's what it is, right? You're, whether it's your praise team leader or that guy that you, you can always count on, who always just does everything well, welcomes people into. And so to say goodbye to those people, um, not even just so, the, so much the logistic point of view, but everything about that, the relationship, just like Brendan was talking about, to say goodbye to that, uh, to that, to, to say goodbye to the norm of just like being able to just like, hey, you know, we're doing this this Friday. Hey, will you be there? You know, just stuff like that. Yet, um, that is also part of the joyful aspect because, yeah, it's costly, but when you see the fruit that comes out of that, when you see, when you boast in the Lord and you're saying, during COVID, this is not of our doing, during COVID, when everything else was on pause, the Lord allowed us to plant the church. Mm -hmm. And be, be, because of that, people in Fredericksburg are coming to draw closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? So that was definitely, um, and again, and in your faithfulness in the sending church, as you can continue this vision that God has given to us, which is multiplication, 
you get the uh, benefit and the pleasure of experiencing new things as well, new people. And the Lord, man, He has been so good, uh, just constantly sending in more people, right? Not because, you know, you, you did to some elaborate, awesome recruitment program in the church or whatnot. It's, again, as you're just carrying out this vision of evangelism, discipleship, multiplication, you're just naturally, organically uh, evangelizing, living life with other people, living life with Christ. The Lord adds to the number. Amen. He really does. Amen. He really does. And it's so cool to see workers, I hate to use the word replaced, but for lack of a better yeah. word, replaced. I mean, they're coming in. And so you, you're like, man, Lord, what am I worried about? What am I worried about? A couple years from now, we're playing again. Amen. Yep. That's right.